Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillah. Today's question for my tazkiyah is about the legal and ethical considerations when it comes to porn and porn addiction. Well, first and foremost, for us as Muslims, there's no debate about this, that this is haram. And it is not one of any haram. It's one of the worst harams because it's linked to zina. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, uh, wala zina. Do not come to zina. And also because of what we know of the effects of pornography on other social, religious, spiritual, emotional implications. The ramifications of this problem are huge and we need to consider as such. Legal considerations that I would say that the world as a whole has to look at, not only the Muslims, because, okay, if the Muslims get their house in order, there's still a fire around the house that's going to burn the house. I would say this affects everyone. Okay, people talk about freedom of expression, but is this does this fall into freedom of expression? Most people who uphold laws of pornography, they say, what's freedom of expression? Therefore, it causes so many issues when it comes to banning it, because people say it's freedom of expression. So this is what's stopping, actually, most of the laws on banning pornography. But you see, <laughs> at what cost has the world not learned? Do we not have enough research already to show what it causes? Freedom of expression, what cost? There's no such thing as freedom of expression. That's why Islam is a solution to everything. It's about submission. Age and consent. I mean, it's not about that. Who cares how old you are? It's still going to affect you. So it's not about age and consent. Again, these are, as you can see, very Western objections to why we should, we should not ban pornography. Obscenity laws, yes, some countries have tried that, even some Muslim countries, but in the end, people are going to watch pornography in general, imported from overseas, from different countries that have looser laws, it's still gonna affect them. And whatever you know, restrictions would be put on media and internet, people will hack their way around it, no doubt. Regulation, censorship, online distribution, all these, these are legal considerations. But again, see, in the name of law, so many ethical boundaries have been crossed. That's why changing laws are always dangerous in any time and place, because depending on how people feel, Depending on their desires, they can change the law, and that's what's led to the problems that we are faced with today. Other ethical considerations, um, of course, I would say the impact on relationships, age and exposure, cultural norms, privacy, and so many other things. But for us Muslims, first and foremost, our deen, for humans at large losing their humanity losing their sexuality, losing their nature. I would say this is the greatest concern, even for Christians and Jews and other religions, even if, let's say, they don't submit and like, agree with us. But they can see that even in their religion, it is wrong, yet people are not standing up to this huge ill, and we are going to face the consequences of this. So I believe this is one great way other than you know the liberal sadly approaches that some imams and some community leaders take to unite to support lgbtq and others that are actually sorry to say somehow directly linked to these problems that we have imams and community leaders should unite with different community leaders to fight the ills of pornography and the spread of the effects on pornography on other issues that affect sexuality and development of children. To protect our children and to protect, if people don't agree with God's rights, astaghfirullah, and may Allah guide them, at least to protect your humanity and your nature, because we've become, sadly, beyond that.